Agora nós temos legendas também em português. Vi har undertexta på norsk. Vi har nu undertext på svenska. Klicka på sluten bildtext och väl svenska. Voor Nederlandse ondertiteling, klik op de drie puntjes bovenin, dan op ondertiteling en vervolgens op Nederlands. Hola, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos al canal de Team Baxea, ahora con sus títulos en español. Oké, okay, so the boys just untied everything. Uh, we came to stop now, our valve is starting to open. We're like a foot and a half wide on the valve. Very good. So, our task today is to move this barge from... Okay, very good. So right now I'm just walking the barge off. And uh, these, these barges, the deck hands don't like them because they're what we call trunk barges. In other words, it sticks up high, like the barge you see over there on the starboard side is not a trunk barge, you can walk the deck. This one has a deck below what you're seeing here, there's a deck that they walk on. The good thing that I like about them is that they're wider and shorter than normal uh, than the other barges are, and they make for very easy handling barges. As you can see, we're walking right off really well right now. So we're underway. I'm going to start backing up, straighten my rudder around a little bit, a little angle. Traffic from the Elk River. Underway at this time. Very good, thank you. Okay, the bow is starting to move, the stern's coming out. So we'll just put port engine in neutral and keep backing up. There's another barge I have to get by back over here. So make sure that I get some water in between us. Unfortunately, uh, it's... Uh, trying to close on the side. We got about 40 right now. All right, very good. I got to check up... I got to check up that bow. All right, it's going to land on that barge that's behind us. Unfortunately, by checking it up, it also uh, makes... Uh, we're not really closing on the bow anymore. We're looking good right now. Very good. In another video doing this, People would ask me why I just don't back up. And backing up, you can see things take off on you very quickly. So if I go real slow, it would be much better. But sometimes you get in a hurry and you want to get stuff done. All right, you're probably seeing that other barge that I was a little concerned about. And back up a little bit more. Bow swinging that way, so maybe I'll get by this barge and spin it right around. Very good. Security call to Elk River. Underway from berth 51. Be down to KMI Carteret. Okay, now I've got some room, so I'm going to start spinning the bow counterclockwise. I think the people over in Europe will say anti-clockwise. <laughs> so I don't know 
how this is working. I'm trying a new setup here so that people can see more of the rudder angle indicator because YouTube is a hobby and not my job. I have to do my job first and uh, came up here quickly so I wasn't able to check anything out because I'm doing my job. <laughs> Sometimes people in the comments have all these great ideas of how I can do things better and they seem to forget that you know what this YouTube thing is just for fun my real job is running the tugboat and running it safely but anyway she's spinning now I'm watching the stern and as she goes I'm going to just straighten out the rudder here keep the turn going but I want to get far enough up so that the stern of the tug won't hit the barge as I roll around so I get the rudder straight give it a shot ahead And that ought to do it. Right, bring the rudder hard over. Keep the turn rolling. Now I give a what we call a left twist. So my starboard engine's ahead, my port engine's stern. Walk back to the wheelhouse, make sure that I calculated the turn right. I'm not going to hit the other barge with my stern. It looks good. Yes, sir. Good job. Thank you. Traffic to the departing way to Lost Southbound. I am warned to be back in Attic Global Bound for Sea Northern Write a little note for me to write in the log later what time we got underway. Now, I don't want to come ahead because, as you can see, we don't have a ton of room up there. So we'll just keep turning here. I'm hoping you can see my uh, throttles. Try to hit. Like I say I got this new setup. So, <laughs> unfortunately, with this, the way I have the camera looking at the rudder angle indicator, it's kind of on a arm, and the arm accentuates the shaking. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys might be getting dizzy watching it. They're hardly shaking up here at all. But it seems to be moving around. And if you look up at the chart plotter, you can see where we're, we were in the corner over here. And we're turning around this way. My vector line or predictor line is showing how my stern is going that way. Everything's working out good. Probably a mile or so. Roger, that's it. Thank you. be good on going back. Center my rudder, keep the other engine ahead. Let this one settle down in neutral. Put it ahead. And then we put our seats in the full upright position and stow our tray tables and strap in for the ride. Foggy day. We had some real fog yesterday where uh, in the middle of the harbor it was about zero visibility. Any of you that uh, want to see some of that, I posted a picture on Instagram. If you follow me at uh, TimBSC at Instagram, you'll see a picture where you can just barely see the bow of the barge. As we come out of the channel here, this might be a good time to uh, talk about operating in low visibility. Uh, we obviously have AIS and radar. And we like to uh, keep a good eye on them. Post a lookout on the bow with a radio that talks to me because he's going to have about 350 or 400 feet better visibility than I am because he's further ahead. And uh, Keep a real good ear to the radios. And obviously, I didn't say it because it kind of goes without saying, but when you're operating in reduced visibility, it's not exactly a. Oh, hang on a second, I got a call. Elk River! 
Hey, Cap Cap. Uh, northbound old day draw, we'll see you on one. All right, you want me to hold up for you? Uh, if you make a turn, that's fine. No problem. Okay, finest kind. We'll see you on the one, Cap. Good to hear your voice again. Now that pilot that just called me on this uh, tanker that's coming in he used to be my mate. Captain, I don't know if he wants his name out there, but we'll say Don O. He's awesome. He uh, one of the one of the better mates I've ever had. He uh, went to the to the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, and there are a lot of guys that go there that <laughs> that end up as pilots, and they kind of I don't know. I don't know if they'd all agree to me saying this, but a lot of them uh, seem to fancy themselves as a <laughs> maybe above and a bit in a different class than us lowly tugboat people. But this guy was different. He uh, he went there to play baseball and uh, turned into a excellent student. Loved the industry. I think he worked in the Gulf on uh, some of the the Gulf exploration and drilling ships and then he came to work and came to work with us and uh, started out on deck not with me but then got trained and when he was released he and I started working working together and was a phenomenal phenomenal uh, mate incredible mariner and now he's it just it <laughs> it makes you feel so proud when, when uh, somebody that you worked with has stepped up and really moved to the basically the apex of a career I'm being a pilot is something that I'd love to do but I'm a little long in the tooth to change careers and I like what I'm doing but uh, I'm filled with pride that Don has done such a good job I'm gonna keep this rolling and uh, you can see the fog and when we come around the corner you'll see the ship that we're talking about It was interesting when I was coming, when I was underway yesterday with a, when the fog was really, really bad. VTS was helping a ULVC, an ultra large container vessel, uh, get from where we are here out to sea. And to do that, they have to transit through the kills. And VTS, I was coming into the kills, and uh, VTS advised me that they didn't want any meeting or passing because of low visibility, because, I mean, you couldn't see anything. And I was fine with that, so I was just kind of hanging out in the anchorage, Bay Ridge, not with the anchor down, but just drifting. And uh, there was a catamaran, a sailing catamaran, that luckily he had AIS. I could see him as a target on the radar. And I uh, could see his name, and I called him on 13, couldn't get him. And he seemed to be having his hands full because he couldn't see anything either. And he was right in the middle. Of, he was probably, I'm thinking that he was thinking that if he was in the middle of the channel, he'd have more room to maneuver. But doing that, he was right where all the commercial traffic is, too. So uh, it, he, I would see him doing about four knots, and then I'd see him doing point two knots, and then he'd be headed west, and then he'd be headed north, and then he'd swing around to the south. And uh, it, it looked as though he and I were going to be on top of each other. So I called him, and I reached him on 16. And the reason why I tell you this story is that he seemed, when I explained to him, I said, what are you doing? This is how I'm going to go ahead of you. You can take my stern. I see you on radar and AIS. And I told him, you know, if you want to know what's going on, you might want to listen to Channel 13. And then after that, he got tangled up with every ship going out to Ambrose Channel. But luckily, he listened to me and he spoke to everybody on Channel 13. And uh, that, that was a perfect example of when a uh, recreational boat, it's a real good idea to uh, listen to Channel 13. And uh, he did that and it worked out well. If you're interested in that, I have a video uh, called channel uh, VHF channel 13 that uh, explain more about 13 and how to use it and that sort of thing
you guys can see it, but uh, if you hear some beeping going on, I'm just uh, adjusting my radar. When you're at the dock, it's hard to see exactly everything because you get so many shadows. But the radar's working good. Everything's looking good. Now you can see, if you look at the chart plotter up here, this is the big ship. He's got one that's where Don is, my old mate. There's a assist tug on one side and a assist tug on the other, and these are his predictor lines. So in six minutes, he'll be right where we will be. If we went straight, we'd be by him up here, but we're going to turn this way and go south. I have a little bit more throttle I can use, but I still barge is doing bunker work, and although they don't usually get too, they, they're usually heavy enough that they don't feel much of my wake. I'll get out of the channel and get by his assist tug before I uh, jingle her up a few. <laughs> if you hear people say jingle it up or running on a slow bell, those are all from the old commands from years ago when they didn't have controls to run the engine. They'd have an engine room and there was a jingle for how much you wanted to increase and there'd be a bell so that you'd run on one bell or two bells how fast you're going. Okay so you should start to see a on the on the starboard side there a big yellow tanker over there and uh, that's Don's ship or the ship that he's piloting right now. And I'm sure you know this, but just in case you don't, what, ha what happens is these, these ships are probably foreign flagged and they come in with a foreign crew, but when they approach our waters, they have to take on a pilot. And a pilot is somebody with a, a big license who's also got his pilot pilotage which is more than just what we get. We get what we call recency, where we have to have 12 trips. They actually have to draw the charts by hand of every place that they have recency. So if you're a pilot in one area, that doesn't mean you're a pilot in another area. You're only licensed for the areas that you've sat for. And when I say sat, that's where you've drawn out the charts and you know all, uh, how the tide and wind and current and the uh, traffic works in a certain area. So I can't see right now, but it looks as though his, um, I don't know if his assist tug has a line up or not. And when I was at another company doing assist work, it sucks when you have a line up and you're being towed like that. And the reason why they do that is so the ship can, can keep working so that it has steerage, but the tugs slow the ship down. And yeah, it looks like he has a lineup. And what happens is if I throw a big wake at him, he'll be uh, going up and down and can break his line, not because of the pressure he puts on it, but because of the wake I throw. So that's why I'm waiting to not increase my speed until he goes by. And you know what, we're doing 7.8. Visibility's good here, but it looks like it's gonna thicken up when we get down to Bergen Point past the Old Bay draw. So I'm not even gonna increase speed. I'm gonna keep it just like this. Have a safe trip, Captain Don. <laughs> He's probably being all busy talking with the people that are on the ship. But anyway, that's how pilots work. And uh, another interesting thing is that uh, I guess I think that uh, a lot of the people that follow the channel are airline 
people from the airline industry, I think they they can uh, attest to this as well. Oh, hang on a second. Elk River. Unit calling the Elk River. I don't know. Thought that was for me. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, that's what he's saying. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, what I was saying is that pilots, like airline pilots, I think the international language for both aviation and the maritime is English. So even if you're a pilot in another country, instead of having all these different ships from all over the world working with all of these different, you know, going into different areas, instead of having to have someone on the ship that can speak 200 different languages, years ago they all decided on speaking English. I think that's the same way in the airline industry too. Maybe some of you airline guys can verify that for me, but I think all the airlines all speak in English too, so it doesn't matter. Uh, what is your native tongue? They all speak in English and they all talk to the towers in English regardless of where they are. All right, so uh, I'm going to shut this off now. You can see it's a little foggy. I'm not shutting it off because it's foggy, but because there's less to see. And we've got about an hour and a half before, or an hour, hour and 15 minutes before we get to where we're going. So I'm going to shut this video off and start it up when we get to the other side. Okay, so we've had to slow down. We're coming right around the corner here over to, uh, came by Port Ivory. Up on the left over here is uh, Holland Hook. And I don't know if you can see it in the frame there or not, but uh, the Air AK Railroad Bridge and the Goffles Bridge right behind it. We've got a ship that's northbound that's coming through there. So he's asked the three of us, the guy ahead of me, me, and the guy behind us to meet him on this side of the bridge. So we've all reduced speed to let him get through the bridge and uh, we'll see him on one whistle. Just see his bow sticking out right now. Now when you look at the chart plotter up here, you'll see I have this little box. I have that clicked on the guy in front of me, the Jacksonville, because I want to see what his speed is. If you see his speed is 4.1 knots, our speed is 4.1 knots, so that ensures that we won't get on top of each other and maintain this distance. Once he gets going, he, he'll make much better speed than I will. That's one of our 4200s that's uh, a pin boat. Here up into little uh, ATV and uh, one of the newer boats in the fleet. And he's going to be going. I think he's going just a little bit further than uh, than we are. So that's why I fell in behind him. That he can keep going. You won't have to go around us. Looks like he's starting to speed up. You can see some quick water happening behind him. His speed is up to 4.9 now. So I'm going to increase speed a little bit. And you can see the size of that ship and why he didn't want to meet us. If we met, met on the other side, if we kept rolling, we would have met on the other side of the bridge and it's right in a turn and there isn't a whole lot of room. So that's why you have a pilot. So a pilot figures that out and uh, tells the, makes the arrangements with the other guys, like the three tugboats here, and the foreign crew doesn't have to worry about it. They're in good hands. So now I'm seeing the Jacksonville's up to 5.6. We're just increasing a little bit.
it might seem odd, but it's really hard to go slow when you're going just in clutch, and especially with a light barge. There's no, there's just only 3.7 knots of wind right now, so it's not that bad, but it's really, this is a difficult maneuver when you're waiting for somebody for traffic to get by and you have a light barge and the wind is blowing you all around. When you have way on, if you're making five, six, seven, eight knots, and you have way, Very good, thank you, Cap. Now it's the pilot thanking us for holding up for him. Jacksonville's up to 6.8 now. He's increasing, I'm gonna increase a little bit too. The other day we were in Kingston, New York, and uh, I missed a really good opportunity that, uh, you know, like I say, my primary job, my, my only job is to run the tugboat. And uh, filming stuff is just if I have time and off watch, or in this case I'm on watch, but it doesn't really affect too much of what I'm doing. But, uh, a loaded ATB went by us, and they were a long ways away from us, and the tug was tied up alongside the barge, our barge, and the loaded ATB went by. And you could have seen where their wake was long, was a long distance away from where we were. But as they approach, what you don't realize, the same thing's happening with this ship right now. This ship is pushing, and it's actually lifting the water up. So it might only, you know, it's nothing that you can see, but we're not talking about his wake. We're actually saying that he's actually pushing the level of the water up. So as you do that, when you're tied to a dock, you'll start, the, the barge is just floating and uh, it, 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 it moves back and forth depending on if the tide or the wind is going away or if if in the case of the ship going by, it's lifting the water up, even by a few inches, the barge will want to slide downhill. And in Kingston, I was watching how, as the ATB went by, the tug that was tied alongside the AT, uh, tied alongside our barge, first started moving one way, and then when the tug went by, then it, you know the ATB went by, the tug slid back the other way, and some people just watch and wait for the wake to happen. The wake is just kind of a bump that's going to happen. But the, the actual suction, or in, in this case, actually lifting a wall of water up makes you slide to one direction or the other. And uh, it would have been a really fun thing to video, but like I said, we were kind of busy at the time and that takes priority. All right, so the Jacksonville is up to 8.8. .8. I'm at seven. I'd like to go faster, but you can see this other barge over here on the uh, this other tugboat. Uh, they're putting their barge into the slip over there. See those blue containers? And then up further on the right-hand side, you'll see little green containers. Those are two separate companies that both uh, haul containerized trash. And um, years ago, they used to have what they call the trash run where they'd have open barges that were filled with rubbish. And unfortunately, a lot of it would blow out. Now they have them all containerized and uh, I guess it's uh, much more efficient and friendly for more friendly for the environment this way to do it that way. So, for a long time, I was wondering why the blue barges went there and the green barges went there, and I knew they were both trash, but I didn't know what they were doing. So I talked to one of the guys, and he goes, "Oh, that's one company we do up here, and the, the other one's another company we do they do down there." <laughs> that's what it is. If you look over to the starboard side, you'll see three white and blue boats there. Those are what they call lube oil boats. And if you see some steam coming off of them, all those boats have uh, heated cargo. They, they're, they load them full of lube oil, and lube oil is very hard to pump because it's so viscous. And so uh, they uh, run steam off a steam line that keeps it all hot so they can pump it so that it moves much better. But while we take the bunkers to boats, they take the lube oil to boats. Go ahead. 
so now I'm coming up to the AK bridge. I'm going to switch. This is where we go from channel 14 to channel 12 and check in on channel 12. Traffic from the Elk River. Sure. Buy most of the things that I would worry about my wake about so I can start to increase speed. Traffic from the Elk River. AK Bridge. Very good. That traffic says that there's no reported. And that doesn't mean that we won't see somebody else if there's a, what we call a light tug. A light tug would be a tug not pushing or towing another barge. Um, so if it's just a tugboat, he should be able to stay out of the way of everybody. So we might see other boats, but when it's big ships or a tug and a barge, he'll tell us where they are, where we're going to meet, and that sort of thing. What we should give us an idea of what we can expect. Take a second here to write a little note for me to write in the log. Yeah, we're coming up to approaching speed here. Still looking at the speed of the uh, security at Port of the Jacksonville ahead of us. Make sure I don't get on. And if you notice, if you, I don't know if you can see it on, you, on, on there, but the Jacksonville speed slowed down as he went around the corner. He probably didn't reduce his RPMs, but what happens is when you start to, to, to turn, the amount of barge that's going through the water increases because now the water that he's vectoring ahead on is starting to hit the side of the barge and that slows him down. Where when you're just pushing ahead, only the bow is acting as resistance. Or the, the, I shouldn't say the bow, the, the, the width of the unit is acting as a resistance. But as you turn, until your vector line lines up with where you're going, the sideways, the broad side of the barge makes resistance. So now you can see his speed has just gained almost half a knot just by getting straightened out there. And the same thing will happen to us. Years ago I used to run a pilot boat on my time off just to keep busy while I was home. And there are some pilots that, uh, I shouldn't say some pilots, one pilot in particular, I could probably say this because he's retired now, but I used to run the pilot boat for him and he used to go, when he was on a ship, he'd come flying up to the pilot area the pilot boarding area where other pilots might slow down and get the speed off the ship he'd be in a hurry so he'd go f charging ahead at sea speed to the pilot boarding area and then just as before he got there he put the the ship hard over one side and get it turn about 45 degrees then hard over the other side and come almost 90 degrees the other way and then straighten it out and by doing that he'd knock about five to eight knots just going through that maneuver without even touching the speed, it, it, the, the same thing happens that happens to us happens to ships even more so. So he would use that maneuver like an S-turn to slow down and then he'd be at the proper speed where we'd usually board a pilot or disembark a pilot around, uh, around seven knots. It depends on the boat, the pilot boat that you're running, but seven knots is what we, we particularly did at that time. And it's funny, some people might think that you'd be better off landing on a ship that stopped, and you, you don't. And it's the reason why is that um, the ship can turn one direction or another, even if it's, even if there's a gale and it's blowing really bad, the ships are so big that they, pr they can produce a lee, but you don't want them to roll. So as long as they're still moving and they get broadside to the, to the seas, they, they're, they'll have a lee side of them, and as long as they're moving, you can stay right in that lee and pick them up. If they went all stop, uh, the, the, the ship would be moving and, and the boat would not be able to feel the effect of, the, of where the bow wake rolls down and rolls down the side of the ship you can kind of get in where the boarding ladder is and have it a little bit calmer to uh, take on a pilot or put a pilot onto a ship and so that's why they do that. Over on the port side is the old, what used to be called uh, uh, Gulfport, 
And on the starboard side is Bayway. Oh, Bayway. You'll see some big towers with uh, wires on them straight up ahead. Those are known to us as the Griselli High Wires. Griselli, I think, is the town or the area that that power plant is in. And so sometimes you'll hear people making security calls, coming under the high wires or at the Griselli high wires. That's what they're talking about. All right, enough of that. Hey, you know, it's important for me to say this. I said this in another video, but uh, we were talking about uh, operating in reduced visibility. There's something that we call the speed rule, and it's just kind of a rule of thumb. Obviously, you have to figure out what works for you. But generally, in reduced visibility, it's always a good idea to make sure that you can stop. You only go as fast as you can stop in half of the distance that you can see. For instance, if you have a quarter of a mile of visibility, you better be able to be able to stop at least at a bare minimum in an eighth of a mile. So uh, sometimes people say, well, how much, when do I reduce speed? Well. When you don't feel safe is probably the best one. You could use the speed rule. And, uh, speed kills. So <laughs> the slower you go, sometimes the better. All right, so up here on the left-hand side, you'll see VZ Paper. I think it's a paper recycling facility. But we're going down to these docks that are set at an angle. And unfortunately, when we had to wait for that ship, I, I wanted to get a little bit of ebb tide to put me onto the dock. And I think I'm going to get there right about slack water, which will still be fine. It's just that it's nice when you have a little bump from the tide to help you out. As we come by these buoys, as I said in a few other videos, regardless of what the tide charts say, look at the buoys when you come by or look, by, look at a boom that's floating or anything that's in the water to give you an idea of what's happening. And now as I look at the 32 buoy over here, it looks as though, it looks like it's pretty slack on that buoy right there. I'm not seeing anything, like there's no real wake in the water. If anything, there might be a little bit of flood coming at us, and eh, maybe not. Nah, I think that's just the wind. I hope so anyway. Yeah, there might be just a tail end of the ebb. Uh, We'll make it work. Anyway, if you look straight ahead, I don't know if you can see it, there's white tanks and two lights over there, and we got to go in between these cells over there, and it's going to be a, a pretty big angle to make that turn, but we'll figure it out. So I'm still moving right along. If you look on the chart, this is where we're going to be going. In fact, I'll zoom in. Oops. There we go. We're going to be going in right in here. So uh, it's going to be like about a, a 160 degree turn. But that's okay. That's a, that's kind of why I wanted that ebb tide so that as I turned hard, the ebb would set my stern down. If I had it with a flood tide, it's hard. It's easy to turn the bow, but the flood's going to grab the stern. I'll be making, you know, I'll be going sideways too fast. So. Time to start to reduce power. We're at eight four right now, so being a light barge, the wave will come off the barge very quickly. If you guys are watching right here, here's if you're looking at the that will tell our speed. Now I'm gonna give Chris an idea what's going on. Alright, Chris, you got me? Yeah, I got you. Okay, so you see those two cells over there, we're going to go in between them. We're going to be uh, uh, starboard side two. And we don't have uh, any fenders down, do we? Okay, good, because we, we don't want them to get in the way. All right, cool. Doesn't 
look right from this angle. <laughs> when we get over there, it should look a lot better. <laughs> or at least that's what I'm hoping. Oh, you know what? I gotta get around that cell. The next cell is on the other side of it. Yeah, Chris, we're not going in between those cells. I, I got to get around this one, and the the, the cell we got to get around is, you know, this one that's closest to us. The next dock over there is where we're getting in between, but we're still going to be going starboard side too. He's probably saying, "What is he talking about?" And it looks like it's fendered up pretty good. If I have to lean on that, we can, but uh, it'll be all right. So actually, I had it in my mind that we were going to be going port side too, and I wanted a little bit of ebb. But since we're going to be going starboard side too, a little bit of flood's going to help me. And if you look over at the second cell close to us, between the, the going from us over, you count between two and three cells, you see the boom there? It looks like it's angled my direction, which means either the wind and or the tide is pushing that boom in a little bit and that's good that's going to help us out so these are all the things that we think about now we can see the other cell pretty well that we have to get in between I'm going to go all stop and just coast I'm going to start setting my rudder up hard over to starboard maybe even just put one and clutch a stern on the starboard engine Put your head on the port, start getting this thing rolling around. Like I say, we have, we're going to have to do about 150 degree turn here, maybe 160 uh, degrees. I knocked my 80 off our uh, starboard corner from the end of that pier there. Uh, our valve has started flapping it now. Very good. And see, that's interesting. He'll tell me when he can see down the dock, but from my angle, it looks like that cell is halfway down the barge and he still can't see down the dock yet. So that's why you have a man up there because of the difference in perspective. He's seeing what's really happening. So now because of that tide is coming. Uh, your valve's all the way past the, the first pier now. I can see down, the, see down the dock there. Okay, very good. Now uh, the thing I, I can watch that for now. Just make sure I don't hit that cluster ahead of us. Uh, and they, yeah, you're just laying in that corner. They got, there's so much padding in there all the way around it. Very good. If you had to guess, how much room would you say I could come ahead before that forward sells an issue? Uh, like 50. Very good. Okay, 50 feet isn't much, so I'm going to start slowing down and increasing my turn. Very good. Okay, so now you can see the boom on the other side. Oops, sorry about that. Hit the camera. <laughs> um, you can see the boom on the other side is pushed one way, and the other one is pushed the other way. Closing on as well. We got like 35. 35. So now I'm going to have one in clutch. So if I have to, I got to back real quick. Right down to 30. Okay. So I'm going to start backing up just a little bit so that not so much backing up as to not close on it. Past. Uh, we're holding 30 right now. Uh, we're going ahead, but no. Very good. Now what I'm going to do is stop. I'm going to actually set my rudder over the other way so that I don't go slamming into the pier. I'm, ju I'm just coasting right now, but I'm uh, getting... We're coming past the first cell now. I don't think the second one in is going to be a problem because that's going to be like 35 ahead of us. Very good. Okay, so now we're getting close to touching yeah, on that corn. Yeah, see your side. I think you're going to touch on the corner there soon. Yep, not a problem. Okay, so I'm going to start slowing that down. All right, we got 30 in front of us to the second case on right now. I'll let you know I'm clear. Okay. We're starting to slide ahead. Uh, we got a little more than 20 in front of us. Okay, I'm going to lean up against that uh, cell and then roll around. Oh, uh, yeah, we should be clear in this case. Uh, but now he's not stopped. We're not really swinging as much. We still have like 15 in front of us for the next case. I'm going to confront you. 
All right, I'm going to try to not move ahead too much and just roll around. Yeah, hard. So, so this dock had those good cushions there. We leaned up against there. The tide was moving me more. I leaned up against it more than I wanted to, but because it's fendered up with those tires, I don't think that's a roller, but it's able for us to roll right around the corner like that. So there was like a... Yeah, we're trying to open up on this case on now. Very good. So now we're just rolling around. Everything's fine. I'm doing a twist with a little bit more ahead. Chris, I'm going to start coming ahead, so uh, let me know if I need to stop. Like, if I get into 20 feet, let me know. All right, we're at 30 right now, so you can come ahead a little bit if you want. Cool. Now, by coming ahead, I'll get more of my back end of the tug of the unit, of the bar. Okay, so now I'm going to back up. Uh, I say back up. It's not really back up. I'm just stopping. Uh, we're holding like 15 now. Uh, I think you're going to clear everything fine now. It's like the corner of the valve is hands up. Everything you did land over there would be on like the, um, maybe like a good part of the bar. I'm tired. But we're starting to open up on it now. So here you're starting to Very good. Good job, Chris. Chris is my AB, my able-bodied seaman on board, and uh, we're at a interesting point in his career and uh, my crew. He's been an extremely valuable member of the crew for a long time, and uh, he studied and he is ready for advancement. And uh, this may this may be one of the last times we sail with him because uh, I think he's going to go into the tankerman program, and he's studied and got his tankerman PIC. But that still doesn't mean he can get a job as a tankerman. He has to still be trained. And they've been waiting for the right time for all of that to happen. And it looks like that time is very quickly approaching. So now I'm just slowing down. Everything's fine. I got no reason to hurry. There's a man on the dock that can catch a line from us. So we'll just go nice and easy. Let everything slow down. Yeah, I got on both of these guys and a little bit like the main part of the dock. So, I mean, if you want to slide ahead, you can. Just, uh, all right. Um, my big thing is that we got to get in that hole, you know. Uh, so there's that part that I got to miss ahead of us. I got you. All right, we're down to like 40 on the panel. Very good. Okay, now I've been coming ahead on my port engine. I'm just going to start twisting again. Actually, you know, what? I'm just going to go. I'm going to just let it go. I'll stop and let it drift because the energy in the barge is still rotating it around and. I, I'm a little nervous. There's a notch. Actually, if you look at the chart plotter, I'll zoom in. This notch right here, I'm worried about the bow hitting. All right, we're down to 30 up here. Okay, is that 30 ahead of us? Uh, uh, 30 off uh, your starboard side in the bow. Um, I'm walking to the port side now. To look. So he's looking over here to tell me how much room I have up there. Yeah, we'll probably have to be pretty much like touched up to fit in here. Bar's pretty wide. Okay, cool. I'm just still letting it drift, so uh, we're going to be cool. And we're, we're moving ahead. That's just with the drifting, so we get out alongside, you throw out a line, and then we'll, you'll stop us when we're in, in, the, in position. Very good. Yeah, I can see that other side now, so we're good. Okay. So now I'm setting my rudder up hard to port. The bow is coming over okay, but if I do a twist, it'll start shooting the stern over, which is what I want to do because I don't want to get cockeyed. I still want to land flat on the dock. I really five all the way down. See that? Now we're flat. Very good. Chris, do you want me to stop here until you get a line, or you want me to keep drifting ahead? Uh, we got to come ahead like 20 for this uh, forward line. Okay, very good. So we got to come ahead 20 feet, he says, and I'm just drifting in neutral. We're still doing like 0.3. 
which doesn't seem like very fast, but it's very fast if you hit anything. So the good news is I can see the other side of the dock, that part that I was worried about, the bow is inside over there. So we're looking uh, good. Rihanna line across now, it'll be a forward line in like eight feet. Very good. Now what he's saying is that it's either right alongside of us or it's ahead of us. And as we go by... Very good. So when he says it's going to be a forward line eight feet by eight, but as soon as we get eight feet, the bollard, that yellow bollard that you see, um, uh, we'll that line off. Uh, we're not really coming ahead fast, so just stop. Uh, yeah, we got plenty of room in front of us. We got like 40 feet at least. Very good. You find out what he wants to do. I'll put one in gear. So yeah, when he says that it'll be a for, uh, forward line in eight feet he means that i can drive forward into that line when i move eight feet ahead the problem you you're the man chris good job all right and that's it now i'll check out of traffic and uh we're done thanks for riding along and uh thank you so much for watching you guys are the best all right see ya